on the latest episode of The Other Side. Return to Zombie Bigfoot's Cryptic Crypt concludes with our sequel to last year's monster battle, Zombie Bigfoot Scary 16 Monster Showdown 2. And if you thought last year's battle between classic film monsters and classic creatures of high strangeness was wild, we'll get ready for the nun on a speedboat. To listen, go to patreon.com slash Bigfoot Collectors Club. Bigfoot Collectors Club presents terrifying tales from zombie Bigfoot's cryptid crypt. <laughs> I know a ghost story about you. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Bigfoot Collectors Club, the show where we talk to amazing... Uh, look, I can't even get through today's <laughs> intro, Riley. I'm terrified. I'm terrified. Yeah. Hall- Halloween ended. It's it's over. The spooky month should be over. But uh, look, look, right, right. I'm your host, Michael McMillan. With me always is uh, super producer. Riley Bray. Obviously not with us is Bryce Johnson. Mm-hmm. He's been missing all month long. And I, I'm just terrified because did you get did you see all the messages we got from last week's episode? I did. Yeah, I did. I did see those. I, and- did you? OK, so OK, where do I start? So. We found out at the tail end after like in like it was a Marvel movie or something after the episode ends, you can hear Bryce calling to the listeners for help. And he says he's not alone. Yeah, I I mean, I I didn't add it. I I can say that. And I haven't actually heard it yet. Um, uh, I, yeah, uh, well, uh, okay, sort of so I've, I've heard it. I've listened to it over and over and over again. Let me just play it back for those of you who missed it last week. Uh, co-host B- Bryce Johnson, like coming in out of nowhere at the end of last week's episode. Let's just check this out. Hello, listeners. Can you hear me? It's Bryce. I need help. I'm trapped in a strange and mysterious place, and I, I'm not alone. Save me. What? Oh, my God. What? He sounds scared. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What okay, went to add. That was even scarier. I don't know what to do. What does that mean, Riley? I have no idea. Uh, I... <laughs> what was that? Right? What? What? I thought that was you. What was that? No, that was not me. <laughs> <laughs> Foolish mortal dudes! I am Neonis, overlord of the jet ski dimension. Your compatriot, Bryce O. Johnson is trapped in my horrible of infinity. If you want it back, you dudes must record the BCC Jack Scale Special. Whoa, wait, wait, what? Yeah, and it better be gnarly. Okay, I'm sorry, uh, Neonis. We have a couple questions, just yeah, real quick up top. More than a few, yeah. Um, okay, it's weird because you kind of, he kind of sounded like a like a surfer guy, and then he got a little British there at the end. I don't know what's happening. Uh, okay, wait. Let me just clarify two things. One, there is a jet ski dimension, and Bryce is a prisoner there in something called the Whirlpool of Infinity. Yes. What part of that did you not comprehend, com- compadre? Hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, also, also, hold on. Just to get the, the timeline straight. So in order yeah. to free Bryce, we have to record an episode that we're already planning to record. That's the idea, Neonis? Uh, yes! Okay, well, we can't record the episode without Bryce. Um, can you... At least free him from this whirlpool long enough so that he can do the show. Ugh, fine. Oh, I'll free Bryce only for the jet ski special record. But if this special sucks, all three of you dudes 
will be joining me in the jet ski dimension for like ever. Wait, what? Oscar the Beast at BCC. Catch you later. What? Whoa. Dude, that guy had a weird vibe. That's crazy. Bryce is a, is trapped in the jet ski dimension, and we have to film the jet ski special or record it. I, that, the rules were unclear. Do we have to film something or record it? What is this special even going to be? <laughs> I mean, we got to get some more notes from Neonis. I, he seems to have a vision, so I, you know, I, he's at least an executive producer on the project at this. Yeah, point. Yeah, I don't know how if we're like going to contact him back or how this is going to work out. This is wild. All I know is we got to save Bryce, but we also have a show to do right now. So maybe we just get this episode out of the way. We do this episode and then we will get to work trying to figure out um, how to free Bryce from the jet ski dimension. How's that sound? I mean, I I think we need to find some jet skis. That seems to be. That's true. uh, And we need to have like have not a climate disaster happening so that we can actually go someplace (laughs) and record it. We select a place or to get those jet skis. Yes. Do you think Neonis was behind the oil spill? That would be seriously harsh of his non mellowness my yeah. dude all right well i'm worried but we we got a show we got guests waiting i'm sure they're gonna have some advice for us uh but before we get into it guys um just a reminder that bcc obviously now we're gonna have to we're gonna take a hiatus mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. until january the free feed is gonna take a little break we're gonna go work on the jet ski special and freeing bryce Mm -hmm. Uh, But stuff is still going to drop here. We're going to have some Patreon unlocks. We're going to have some fun surprises, hopefully a jet ski special that frees Bryce. So stay subscribed because you will still get something every Wednesday here on the free feed. And but the Patreon of the other side that keeps going like usual. So, Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously, like we don't know what this means for Bryce on the Patreon Maybe Neonis will like let him come do the Patreon while we're doing. It. I don't know. We have to. It seems like there's Wi-Fi in the jet ski dimension. Yeah, in, in it seems like Infinity Bryce Pool. has yeah. access to the podcast, so maybe, maybe, uh, maybe that'll happen. I, I, yeah. I don't know. But um, the 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 free feeds taken. The free feeds taken a little bit of a break, but we will be back at the top of 2022 with regular new episodes. But stay with us between now and then uh and and look you got this great episode today with two amazing guests uh they're two of your favorite guests on bcc uh one of them is a medium and an intuitive the other is a witch doctor they're both published authors they do a podcast together called the witch and the medium uh club scouts of all timelines please welcome back to the show adela levine and mystic dylan all right. Woo, woo. Yay. <laughs> Dela, is that what it sounds like when spirits from the other side talk to you? They must be. Well, right? I mean, if it sounds, you know, I'm happy to welcome Keanu Reeves, Bill and Ted sounding spirits, <laughs> especially Keanu Reeves, anytime. So, um, yeah, sure. I'm yeah. pretty sure Dela's been to the jet ski dimension. <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe you can prepare us. A little. Anyone can go to the Jesse dimension. It's it's her. Yeah, especially if Keanu's on the other side. I mean, but it but he kidnapped Bryce. It's okay. It's Keanu. Okay. It's all right. <laughs> he can do what he wants. Maybe, but I would help Bryce. Okay, actually, I'd be happy to help Bryce and talk with this Keanu esque type of demon okay you know yeah, yeah. yeah. great all right yeah. we love it let's stay in touch <laughs> let's let's figure this out yeah okay great um yeah look uh as we're recording this uh it's still obviously because this podcast is haunted now uh it's the <laughs> spooky season how 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 is the spooky season for go- going for you two it's spooky <laughs> It's stressful. I'm going to be honest. I feel like during this time, I don't know if I'm standing, sitting, sleeping. Um, I don't know where I am. I think I'm in another dimension. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm embracing it, but also it's, it's a lot. And I feel like people, clearly people have a lot of pent up. No one did anything last October. So I think every, all the crazy is out. <laughs> Well, I remember 
I remember last it's true. time. The last time you were on the show, or not last time, uh, but the when you were on the show this time last year, we were talking, or on the Patreon, we were talking about uh, Mercury and retrograde. And I know that, you know, we recently got over, like, a Mercury and retrograde moment, and it fucking beat me up. Like, nothing worked for that, those, like, three or four weeks. So, maybe you're experiencing some shadow of retrograde right now. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, I think I'm I'm experiencing that. Um, I think, I don't know. I just feel like people are, like, obviously this is a time where people get into the spooky, uh, funky mode, but I feel like it's like some next level. Um, I'm pretty sure Spirit Halloween should pay me as a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> well. Okay. <laughs> There we go. Uh, Dale and I are working a party together. Ooh. Yes, that that will that will be interesting. And are this is actually the first time we've spoken. In- <laughs> yes, yes. We just so everybody know we have a podcast in theory together, but we have a lot of backlog you can listen to. Um, Dylan's obviously been in some other dimension because I haven't that I can't get to. Apparently, <laughs> yeah. He has, he has put some spell or something to you know well we haven't been able to talk but we're we we're happy we'll we'll be able to play when we see each other i mean i for me this is you know weirdly enough it's not too different obviously it's not too different for me dylan knows this and i've talked about this like the spirit world is the same any other day but people get more into they want to have fun i've noticed this year and I get more innovated by people wanting to talk to the dead and stuff like that in the holidays, like November, December. Right. Not so much this time. People kind of want to just, they don't want the real deal. They want, you know, a more playful, especially probably this year, which is totally understandable. Well, isn't the idea, I mean, that the veil gets thinner this time of year anyway? Well, this is where me and Dylan differ. I mean, I don't believe that to be true. I believe where he might, we've talked about it. He might, we kind of see a little bit of the same that for me, I just think people are more aware of this time. So they're paying attention to what's already existing. Cause you guys know, I've always said that that realm is with us all the time, but I've noticed that people are more alert. It's just like when you go to a cemetery, you're more alert. Um, that's just my belief. And, um, you know, I think Dylan has a different take on it, which is totally fine, which is, you know, what our podcast was is about, you know, um, the different sides. And for me, it's not any thinner than any other time. But I think I like it because everybody is with me. So I'm like excited. Everybody wants to talk to the dead more and be a part of that world more. I wish people would do it all year round. Yeah, I think this time is just a reminder of death. I mean, mm-hmm. if you look at the origins of of the holiday or what this is about, like theoretically, you know, they say, oh, this is the time that it's thinner. But I also think it's like this is a time when we are prepping for the winter and the harsh winters. And you have right. to think of these civilizations where there was probably a high mortality rate during this time. Okay. Um, so I think it's it's more as time went on, this is the time to acknowledge death, but I don't necessarily think that, you know, energetically, this is like the time when the veil is thin, but I I think these are when the stories about death are made. These are the holidays where people honor their, their ancestors. Um, So I think it just makes it, you know, it's kind of like repetition. So when something becomes so, um, poignant i think energetically and spiritually and and whatever this is the time where i think people are like okay this is there so if everyone is focusing on death during this time it it makes it more encompassing but i think adele is right in the sense that it's like i think on a mundane level as a person we're not necessarily reminded of those moments until they hit us in the face and you know you really can't escape this time when you go into like CVS and there are skeletons everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. And don't you think Dylan, like, um, I mean, 
just like period, don't, doesn't everybody notice? I mean, doesn't it make sense? Like this is when the, everything's de- dying, right? The yeah. leaves are dying. The, the, the right? leaves are dying. The, right. Yeah. This is, you know, and then it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, if you were a farmer or whatever, this was, or way, way back when, not now, but like this was <laughs> when you would like, you know, slaughter your cattle and like preserve the meat and all that stuff. Mm. So it really was a time of death. That's why mm. it's called the blood moon. Um, or October is known as the blood moon because this is when you would like start killing off your, your cattle. Mm. Damn. For the Lovely winter. image. Yeah. Thanks Dylan. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> or like storing your lentils or whatever. You know. <laughs> For the vegetarians out there. Yeah. For all the vegetarians, this gra- is where you would granary. be slaughtering your vegetables. <laughs> exactly. They the do get screen. slaughtered. I yeah. mean, to be fair, yeah. If, if you believe in animism, that everything has a spirit or energy, yeah, they're killed. Mm-hmm. Think Talk about the, the carnival of nightmares that's happening on your cutting board every night, Riley. Yeah, Riley. Nice job. Yeah, Riley. <laughs> yeah, Riley. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we have the two of you here tonight to dig into some L files, some listener files. Mm. These are stories sent into us from club scouts across the world, around the world, I should say, unless you're a flat earther. Uh, which, <laughs> across. Yeah. Unless you're walking, then you're walking across or, or sliding, plane. sliding across yeah. to the end. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think we should just hop right into them. I want to thank everybody who wrote into Bigfoot Collectors Club at gmail.com with some L files. We were running a little low in the tank. We appreciate it. You guys also took my note to keep it a little shorter than they've been going. So I appreciate that as well. If you have a spooky story, something that you can't explain that happened to you, please send it to us at Bigfoot Collectors Club at gmail.com. And hopefully you'll get somebody rad like Adela or Miss Dylan to give their two cents Mm. on your experience. Um, why don't we just hop right in? Um, Riley, do you want to, do you want to kick us off with your, your, uh, the first one that you've got down there? You just scroll past. I know what I did, but just scroll past my first letter and, and. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Yeah. I'm scrolling, man. You're good at buying time while you look for things on your phone. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) That's a real skill. (laughs) Michael's because he's, he's like a tight, he's watching a tightrope walker. It's amazing. (laughs) Um, All right. This story is entitled Zombie. Ooh. Hey, guys. I'll keep the praise short. Love the pod. Love you guys. Aw, love you back. I want to share with you a story that's very similar to one you read in another L-Files episode. In that story, a person in their car saw what they could only describe as a zombie, and their partner, also in the car, asked, what the hell is that? Proving the first person wasn't hallucinating. I think Adela, you were here on the show for that uh, letter. It was like I some, was. Yeah, I think I it might have been too, you, yeah. or maybe it was Jen. But I remember we talked about it later. I think it's okay. Uh, but go okay. on. I remember this letter. They were driving past like an old farmhouse, and there was like some weird zombie-looking thing in the field. Yeah. And then they went back. They didn't see it anymore. Oh, nice! I like zombies. Anyhow, the letter continues. (laughs) (laughs) We all like zombies, let's be real. um, America has spoken. We love zombies. We love zombies. zombies. That's true. Yeah. Really, really hits Dylan doesn't like zombies. (laughs) No, not a fan. (laughs) No, he doesn't. But I'm also not America, so. Oh. Oh. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. Dylan, very defiant. (laughs) Formists. Anyhow, the letter that I was reading. Uh, I never ever heard a similar story, nor found anything online about it. So I was amazed by that listener's story. In my story, I was 24. It was around 4 p.m. I was sitting on the bus next to the window. And when the bus took a turn, I had a couple seconds, maybe five, to have a good look at the corner of the sidewalk. I'm attaching a small image to explain myself. Okay, I'll Assuming put that up on the Instagram. I was looking out the window and in that corner there was an old woman not transparent or blurry just like a physical person standing with normal clothes and hair but her face was nightmarish no nose, just two holes no lips totally white eyes and her cheeks melting down making the red area under the eyes very very visible and red it wasn't a deserted street so people around probably would have noticed her too I felt a level of dread I have never experienced before. 
My eyes were stuck on her, and after she was gone from my field of vision, I looked around the bus if anybody was reacting discreetly to this. No one was. I felt the urge to get down the bus a couple of stops later and text friends about it. I felt so alone, I just had to share it with someone for comfort. Some friends said it could have just been someone who suffered burn injuries or something similar, but I highly doubt it. It looked way more intense and otherworldly than, say, Gary Oldman in Hannibal and was, and was walking casually without any aid in the streets. Nothing strange has ever happened to me but this, and the feeling of dread and need to communicate with someone was a feeling I never felt since. Keep up the amazing work, guys. Regards from Argentina. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, what's your take on that? that? (laughs) I love the abrupt endings. It's my favorite. Well, that's it. Zombies (laughs) game. Gotta go. Zombies are real. I saw one. You guys are great. Gotta go to McDonald's now. (laughs) Argentina. Yeah. Oh, wow. I don't know. I feel like, I guess I I have to be honest. My first feeling was that, you know, you know how you've ever seen things like kind of in a weird lighting or, um, you know, something like that. I mean, (laughs) What? What What did I say? (laughs) I just, I guess I just, I've seen things like that. You know, when you're kind of into this sort of thing Mm -hmm. and sometimes you really see something and sometimes you're like, well, it was the angle and the lighting and it totally looked creepy. I mean, I've seen things that you can't explain, obviously, but I just kind of feel like it, it could be something like that or it could be like a, it does kind of feel like I feel like their friend is pretty. That's just my sense. Could be what someone about the who, as a burn of, victim of dread, though, Adela. The overwhelming sense of dread. I mean, wouldn't you feel dread if you saw somebody who's like a burn victim? I mean, that's going to ignite a lot of sadness and f- mm. uncomfortableness. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think. I think. I kind of go for, because, you know, when people come to me, which happens a lot in DMs and other things about stories like this, I kind of go for more of that feeling, like I said, where you're like, just something's in the air. I can't explain. I want to be able to explain it. And I looked for all of those things, but it just hits me in my gut that something's off. And the dread, I just kind of feel like it could be like a a burn victim or something who it can ignite all of the pain or something. Well, it now just, this club scout, you should feel bad for calling a burn. I know. I know. What? That's exactly what I was thinking. I'm like, wow, you <laughs> just made fun of a burn victim. Um, I screwed up. But I also think, I mean, you know, I don't necessarily believe in the walking dead per se, mm. uh, but I do think that, you know, I think spares can appear in many different forms. Mm. So, I don't. I don't think they saw like a living, not person. breathing person. Maybe they just saw some trickster element or something along those lines, um, or someone who was a burn victim or had leprosy or some other disease. Yeah, it's true. Just, I mean, disfigurement can be like a. a it's a real thing. So right. it's like yeah. someone could honestly look like what was described, as, or also maybe someone in the throes of like extreme drug drug addiction too. Like, I've oh, seen, absolutely. I was just gonna that say that, Riley, because I remember. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. The, Sorry. the white eyes and the red underneath mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. All, but I mean, I, that I don't know. It sounds the melting pretty off scary nonetheless. flesh yeah. and exposing red muscle tissue underneath, though. That feels strange to me. I don't know. I mean, it could be all the above. It could be. It yeah, could be that this kinda... person also is maybe very intuitive and they saw the physical form of a person already experiencing a lot of suffering and then maybe Ooh. in their vision saw even kind of more depth of that maybe that's what i was saying riley yeah hey riley yeah yeah yeah. that's what i was saying like you can see something and see what's going on with someone and then immediately kind of tune in to that person's pain Mm -hmm. so yeah i agree with that which would also explain the sense of dread you saw an outward manifestation of their inner yeah pain Pain. yeah Yeah. maybe you're an empath yeah i'm i'm into it i mean i don't want to see it but I'm into it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here's one a little closer to home. This is says, greetings from central Massachusetts. Ooh. This event happened to me back in June. One night, as I was drifting off to sleep under the covers, I felt something bop my left foot. 
It was as if something was standing beside the bed and had gently swatted my foot with their hand. I'm picturing, this is Michael speaking, I'm picturing like a little cat, like a little kitten bopping your foot. Mm. A little cat swat. Yeah. The, uh, they go on. I even heard the sound of something strike the blanket. Obviously, I was startled. I live alone. I have no pets. So I turned on the light and investigated but found nothing. I decided I had probably experienced a hypnagogic event and went back to sleep. Riley, did I pronounce that word correctly? I think he did. And I was like, wow, where, how's it, where's he going to go with that one? That's, Never heard that that's word. That's a Thank lot God. of word. Yeah. Um, Riley, Google hypnagogic event and see what Maybe comes up. Maybe it's gogic. Hypnagogic. Could be gogic. I think it's gogic. Um, I like, I like how you everybody, feel yeah. free to correct me in the Instagram comments of this episode. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Same, exactly. and repeatedly. The same thing <laughs> happened the next night. I was drifting off to sleep and I felt a bop on my left foot. This time I wondered if I had experienced a leg spasm. So I lay in bed and jerked my leg, trying to repeat the sensation. I could not. And that sound of a hand striking the blanket, that was impossible to replicate from under the bed covers. That night, I slept with the lights on. And the same thing happened the next night. As soon as I turned out the light, bop. This time, however, I had literally been lying awake in the dark, waiting for it to happen. So I was definitely not dreaming. On the fourth night, okay, so this, we're going into night four of Bob's. Yeah. I asked for advice on Reddit. Don't laugh. Sometimes it's useful. Hey, I, I get it. I'm not laughing. Mm-hmm. Reddit's, yeah, I'm learning sure. that Reddit is a very informative place. Mm-hmm. Somebody commented that I should just tell the ghost to go away. So that night before I got into bed, I said out loud to the empty room, you are not allowed to disturb my sleep. You are not allowed to touch me. This is my house and you don't belong here. And nothing happened that night or since. Whoa. I still don't know what the hell happened to me. I've lived in this apartment for five years without experiencing anything unusual. I've acquired no spooky antiques. <laughs> I've not <laughs> taken up seances or Ouija boards. In fact, I've never had any kind of ghostly experience at all. So, did some random ghost just show up in my apartment and disturb my sleep for three nights? If so, why? As bizarre as this experience was, it also seems rather subtle as supernatural encounters go. I saw no terrifying apparitions, and I received no mysterious messages from the great beyond. I was just... It was just something bopping my foot, trying to keep me from falling asleep. I'm tempted to just forget about it, but I can't. It makes me wonder if these kind of subtle supernatural events happen all the time, but experiencers just brush it off and never talk about it. Love the show. I think about you guys when I hike in Leominster State Forest. Leominster State Forest. If I see Bigfoot there, I'll give him a BCC sticker. Please do. Frost. (laughs) Nice. I believe it. Totally. Well, um, just a couple of things. I'm just going to jump in because I think it's an important message that people know that this is mostly how it goes down. I think the bigger things that he, you know, was, was it a, did I say that? Was it a, who yes, was it Ross, that? Ross. Ross. Okay. The, the bigger things that he talked about, like, you know, apprehension, I don't even say it right. That's how rare it happens. <laughs> I won't even say the word right. Apparition. When, yes. I always get that word wrong. Those things and all the big scary things that people push in movies and TV shows are pretty more not the the norm as this is. And usually when it's friendly like that, it's someone you know um, that is connected to you. Getting touched, getting poked, getting touched like that is really, really common. Um, happen, happens to me all the time. And what, what he did is exactly right when you say, I don't want that to happen. And the reason why it stopped is what tells me is it is someone, you know, because family members aren't trying to freak you out. They're trying to be like, Hey, what's up? They're not trying to keep you from going to sleep. You're in the dream half wake state. So that's when you're going to be a little bit more open to it where your mind's going to sleep. So you don't fight the, the experience and your spirits opening up. So when you say, Hey, I don't want to do that right now usually the ones who are definitely loving and not trying to freak you out, just trying to get your attention. They'll just go, Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to freak you out. And they'll stop. So it's very common and he's right. Most people brush it off. And so it was good that he paid attention. 
And now they just told that family member, leave me alone. And now <laughs> they'll never know. Well, that happens. No. That happens. I've had people say, oh, you know, when they have seen something, they'll be like, oh, my grandmother appeared to me and they freak out. Like people always say they want these things to happen. Until they, it happens. Until it happens. Like Dylan. <laughs> like Dylan. No, yeah. Happens. No, I have a, I have a don't happen to me rule. Um, I was in, I stayed in New Jersey and I stayed in this house and literally my, ma um, my comforter, like it like bubbled up and it was like, it sounds, it wasn't floating, but it just like, it like did some crazy shit. I was like, hell no. I've had my dog sit on my bed. That that's good. A long time. No, I know. But I definitely believe it. Like, I think <laughs> so dogs and stuff like that. I think Adela is a hundred percent right. Uh, in terms of, um, it doesn't happen. I, I think people ex like, they watch these movies like the conjuring and uh, they're like, yeah. Oh, something's going to appear and be all right. volatile in, and it doesn't really happen that way. Right. So, so he's totally experienced. It. And even if you notice, this is what I was saying earlier, he's being very logical. He's like, well, I don't know. Maybe I had a, had a leg spasm. It's usually going to be something you're kind of feeling like, I don't know, quite sure. I'm not saying all the time. There are some crazy things that happen, but this is the most common. And so, yeah, if he wanted to kind of go, hey, I'm not sure if this was someone I, I'm connected to, you can throw out, this is just for him to know, say, hey, can you give me a sign? Something not while I'm sleeping would be awesome. And something a little less, you know, intrusive in that way. And if you're trying to get my attention, it's not, everyone always thinks the dead's trying to give you some big, big <clears throat> message, but it's usually just, you know, hey, I just want to let you know I'm, I'm existing still. I love it. I wonder if uh, Ross had anyone not that this matters the proximity to it but i wonder if mm -hmm. anyone had recently passed it does yeah know. It, right it doesn't have to be recent that's what the thing is sometimes it's someone who's like hey you're kind of open to this stuff like maybe if he got into this stuff recently and he's being more and more into it um they're like so now that you're kind of really paying attention um maybe you want to talk to grandma or or grandpa or or a friend or whatever, someone who might have even passed quite a while ago, but you're now kind of game, you know? We heard you listening to those BCC boys. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, Mystic Dylan, I sent you an email with two stories. Why? You're, I'm going to have you read both of those tonight. He's going to read them because he's better at it. Um, like, I asked him to. Really, he, though? You well, are. When you I, do, we do our podcast, you have all this fun performing-esque type of tone. So why don't you read us the first one in that email, Dylan? Yes. Um, I just wanted to make sure. Uh, this is the one about the phantom kangaroos? That is correct. Of course. Yes, okay. of course. What else okay. would it be about? <laughs> yeah. Come on, Dylan. Come on. You know about those phantom kangaroos. Now, the <clears throat> phantom kangaroos was a reference to a conversation that we had with Derek Hayes at the beginning of October in his episode. Okay. 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 So here we go. Oh my God. I can't believe you guys just said phantom kangaroos. I have to preface this with, I've only been listening to your podcast for about six months and I love it so much that I've been listening to each episode starting from the beginning. So, it was a happy accident when I ended up with the latest episode before I knew I was out of sync. Anywho, here's my story for you. My sister and I were about 10 and 7 living in Pittsburgh in the late 70s. We were outside feeding our dogs and rabbits after dinner. It was later in the year, so it was dark. We lived on top of a hill of a sort of... Uh, we lived on top of a hill of a sort, and all of a sudden, over the top of the hill and towards us came this monster walking. Running? Hopping? It was weird. <laughs> Pinned back ears and eyes that freaked me out. My sister and I both ran screaming into the house and told our parents. I don't remember their reaction, and I don't remember where the dogs were or where they ended up. Didn't care. I do know that I was... Uh, that it was every... S wait... I do know that it was every sister for themselves <laughs> that night and 
and uh, and if we even went to sleep, I'm pretty sure we shared a bed. It wasn't until I was in my 40s and I was rehashing the story for a speech I was doing for Toastmasters Club that I had the realization that this monster of my childhood may have been a kangaroo or a wallaby. Still a far-fetched story when you live in the middle of Steel City, right? Until I hear Derek Hayes on your latest podcast sharing the listener's account of the Black Panther that was out of place. Then someone mentions the Phantom Kangaroo and explains it, and well, I had no idea this was a thing. In conclusion, thank you guys for solving a lifelong mystery my sister and I shared for years. It turns out to not be quite as exciting as seeing a cryptid, but at least we know we aren't too crazy. Love your show. Keep up the great work. Lisa. Okay, first of all, I don't know how many uh, answers we provided here because I just have more questions. <laughs> I, I have a lot of questions, um, but yeah. First of all, uh, what speech were you prepping for your Toastmasters Club? <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a fun party. That brings oh up God. cryptid. Secondly, what's a Toastmasters Club? So, so se- thirdly, Toastmasters just kind of... Sh- it's kind of an old school thing. Goes oh. way back. People oh. used to take these classes to learn how to speak in front of people. Oh, cool. It was, uh-huh. yeah, it was called Toastmasters because it's like learning how to do a toast at a party or something. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that was the, you know, just stick name. And mm-hmm. it was for people who had like fear of speaking public. So they would give these um, workshops. That's cool. Well, now I'm disappointed because I thought it was a culinary thing. It was way before like your toast? time, Dylan. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, no just a bunch of, different. of chefs oh. learning how to master toast. <laughs> yeah, perfect toast. And no. I thought we were maybe making a cryptid toast. <laughs> no, she probably was like, "This will be a great, you know, they, they, you know, story that I can learn how to speak in public." Yeah, I was, I was thinking to myself, "Wow, that I haven't heard about, I haven't heard Toastmasters in forever." Well, the thing about this, Lisa. Uh, mm-hmm. listener is that um, listener Lisa is that the 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 phantom kangaroo thing is like it, they're not supposed to be there so it's either like it actually is sort of a cryptid situation which is like why is there a kangaroo running around here um, or it's some sort of escaped animal situation mm-hmm. okay mm. well, yeah like have you seen I don't know what they're called, but like there are those giant hairs or giant like there are some giant ass bunnies out there, like humongous <laughs> bunnies. It's that's Mr. Dillon's conclusion. <laughs> Big ass bunny. That's what <laughs> because they said it was pinned a back real B A B. If you know what I mean. <laughs> yep. Just a no, big ass bunny. They said I have seen them. <laughs> there are there are some ginormous ass rabbits out there. Mystic Dylan is running into a lot of <laughs> phantom babs out there. Like, really? <laughs> yeah. really stuff. I could see a whole a whole Lisa and the Phantom Kangaroo franchise, you know? Yeah. They have adventures and they get into hijinks and <laughs> you should just it's great. Or, or what if it was an abandoned zoo? Happen. Like sometimes, like what if there was a zoo that pitched a tent and then when it left, it accidentally forgot its wallaby. Mm-hmm. I like pitched it. Pitched a tent. I don't know. They're pitching. <laughs> Are you <laughs> traveling? I, I got it. I, I got what you meant. <laughs> I mean, like I don't know how zoos set up. They're in like in little yeah. tents, right? I don't know the traveling yeah, the zoo. Le- Lisa and the wandering wallaby. Yeah. <laughs> It's sequel. It's, it's my next like, kangaroo It's series. like in Red Dead Redemption when they had the the he had to go capture animals. Yes. And, for the yeah. for the zoo guy. I know what you're the talking about. The zoo guy. About. You yeah. know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yep, yep. I get it. All right. That's we're gonna picture. we're gonna take a quick break when we come back. More L files with Adela and Mystic Dylan. <laughs> Well, it seems that Neonis has claimed another victim. Uh, Mystic Welcome. Dylan did not make it past commercial <laughs> break. Um, we're thankful that he got to stay with us as long as he did, but he has vanished, and now it's hashtag Where's Mystic Dylan? Mm-hmm. Um, actually, his uh, computer just ran out of juice, and he didn't have his plug. So, <laughs> oh, darn! I thought maybe it's with Keanu. That's, that's <laughs> as you learn from folklore. That's one way to end up in the jet ski dimension. That's is true. To that is true. Go on a podcast and have your computer run out of batteries. So you end up in the infinite pool. 
That's how. <laughs> maybe that's how it happened to Bryce. Oh, maybe. Uh, Wait, oh, now we're putting the pieces I, together. Now this is all adding up. All right. Well, we better get back into these letters, these L files here. I'll kick this session off. Um, I've got one here that says, "Hey, BCC and guest." That's Adela. Last time I told you a story about my witchy baptism when I was a little boy. Now I'll share a mini anthology of some events that happened not long after while living in that semi-rural area abroad um, uh, in the early 90s. Belief in the supernatural realm was common and normalized there. Nature spirits were a fact of life. Some were benevolent, some were tricksters, and some were spiteful or dangerous. But all were to be respected. Not to imply that they're connected. I don't think they are. But here are some accounts that took place after the baptism. Wait, Michael, just to pause real quick. Let's just refresh everyone on this baptism because it was like there were shadow people, right? And like, what was the deal? I Uh, remember this letter. This was was Santander who wrote this in, Santi. Um, I I don't fully remember either, but I think Grace read this letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was like they they like started like kind of normal, and then they, as they took their robes off, they they became these like spirit realm people. S- S- yeah, Santander's is is a trip, is what we've learned. Yes. Just to set this up. So was this like a coven um, uh, initiation? Okay, kind of felt like no, that no, vibe. No. Uh, but may- I, I don't think it was I can't a speak coven for initiation. Yeah. It was just a. It was a. Um, let me see. I'm gonna pull this up here. Oh, um, I've got the letter here. If we need to cut, this is not how you vamp. Oh, I love um, it. I love a good vamp, Michael. You got it. You stay on that high wire. <laughs> um, yeah. I can't totally home. remember. Their days. I can't either. I just remember it was like heavily psychedelic. Okay. Were they on psychedelics? No, no, no. no. Like the writing and just the whole story as it was he, told. Oh, I see. I, I believe see. he was yes. a baby. He was a little boy. So a tripping little baby. Anyway. Okay. Okay. Listeners, you you go look it up. Okay, <laughs> it's in enough. Grace reads it. It's great. You'll love it. Okay. Go listen. Great. To All right. It. Sorry, um, I interrupted your letter. Let me go Carry back. On. All right. So here's the first of three short short. And he, by the way, all a paragraph each. This is great. Santi, here we go. Number one, monster on the roof. A local witch doctor once helped protect my mom from a fetus devouring creature during her pregnancy. These humanoid creatures were called tick tick which is an onomatopoeia for the sounds they make while they're nearby. Oh, no. Yikes. Thank I you. Like it. <laughs> I was told that one was recently spotted on my neighbor's roof, who was also pregnant, so the neighborhood helped fortify our house. I remember helping put charms and garlic in and around the house, uh, a line of powder, salt, uh, across any openings, probably, I would guess, windows, doors, etc., and watched my neighbors stick knives all around the walls outside of the house, which supposedly deters these creatures as metallic things harm them. Nothing happened to, at my house, to my knowledge, but one night, while my cousins and I were out patrolling, quote-unquote, we saw something from a distance laying on the roof of a neighbor's house, it was humanoid and crawling on its stomach, just waiting. We just ran to our indiv- individual houses at that point. Whoa. Yikes. Hmm. I'm yep. going to say a big old no thanks to the Tick Tick. I'm going to buy a house that's just one giant knife because I don't want that thing coming near me. Or my pregnant wife. Which in this story, I'm I'm lucky enough to. Rosemary's yes. baby. Yeah. Yikes. No likey. Two. Horseman. All right, Santi. I'm sad, Santi's trippy dude. My mom's friends, a couple, came to our house in a panic one night. I mean, this neighborhood is just full of supernatural activity. Mm -hmm. Uh, My mom rushed me to my room and told me to go to sleep. Sure. Uh, Being the rebellious (laughs) kid. Yeah, okay. uh, I saw something crawling on the roof the other day. Now this woman came over to her house screaming, time for me to go to bed. Right. (laughs) Being the rebellious kid, I decided to listen in instead. Suppose. Supposedly, an entity had been trying to abduct the wife for some time now, and the reason they came that night was because this entity followed her home and appeared to her in the mirror, which her husband also witnessed, and they ran immediately to her house. This entity they were referring to was a forest spirit called Tik Ba Yang, 
which uh, usually depicted as a man with a horse's head. Known for misleading people in the jungle. Oh my god. I think he's at my door right now. My yep, dad. He's up. here. He's there. Known for misleading people in the I said his name and he's just is that how it happens? Yeah. Um, yep. In the ju- in the jungle and trapping them in the Fey realm forever lost in the woods. It was a common practice to to wear shirts backwards when entering the woods as that prevented us from getting led astray. Occasionally, they steal humans and marry them in their realm. And it was often said that when it rains while the sun is out and a rainbow appears, it's because the marriage ceremony was taking place. I'm not sure what happened to the wife, but I honestly don't remember seeing her after that in retrospect. (laughs) (laughs) We saw a lot of rainbows, I'm sure. (laughs) Oh my god, these are so great. Okay. whimsical supernatural childhood this person had Very. Yeah, the, 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 the rainbows mean a lot uh, something different than they did for Noah and his crew um, <laughs> here we go three the moths wow okay one night my mom little brother and I were watching our nightly show before bedtime all the lights were off and the only source of light was coming from the TV out of nowhere a moth flew on the screen then two, then three, then more. My mom turned the lights on, and suddenly it was like a scene from a movie. Hundreds of moths in our living room. There were so many, it seemed like every inch of the room was covered. My mom quickly ran my brother and I into her room and closed it. Uh, Just uh, It's the moment something funny's happening. These kids get sent straight to their room. (laughs) Yeah, Um, good. She told us to stay inside until she came to get us. So we did. Minutes later, she came back and said everything was okay. She showed us the living room, and I was shocked to see it was pristine. There was not one moth in sight, not even a dead one. I never questioned it as a kid, but now that I'm older, it is a bit of a head scratcher. <laughs> there's, <laughs> yeah, thank there's no possible way she could have gotten rid of that many moths in such a short amount of time. Vacuums didn't really exist then either. And I distinctly remember moths covering the walls, flying all around her living room, and crying throughout the whole thing because there were so many landing on me. In BCC terms, what the hell was that? Much love, Santi. Wow. Wow. I mean, I mean, your mom was clearly, you know, obviously, like, knew how to banish moths. A out little of the witchy. Room. Yeah. She's on the level. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you grew yeah. up in like a mystical village. It sounds like. Yeah, first, yeah, with a mystical um, mom. Yeah, with mm-hmm. yeah, we're all jealous. For sure. <laughs> I mean, I don't obviously know enough about this culture to be like, oh, she did the moth thing. You know what I mean? I don't know what brought the moths, but clearly your mom knew what to get, how to get rid of them. Um, if she's still with us, uh, I'd love to find out. Like, I don't know if it's possible. If you can find out, do a little more research and find out maybe what that was about or if this is like a thing it definitely sounds like she knew what it was and knew what to do yeah. well those things um it's really common that i've had the weirdest encounters with animals but mostly insect different types of things that happen um and i've learned that my sense is that his mom is very in touch with the earthly realm i tend to be more in touch with the other realm so i feel that the weird things that's happened to me is this realm going like you need to, we also have magic in this realm and they get my attention that way. So that is definitely connected to the other realm using, um, you know, insects or different things like that to, um, you know, working with her and she knows how to communicate with that. So in other words, it's just a, a manifestation using mm-hmm. what already exists here. Right. So th- those energies talk to each other. I've had things like one time I got into a car and it was, it was, it was um, like stepped into the car with, with Citric and all he just got the car and I've never seen this. I grew up in LA and all of a sudden a Lotus just flew towards me and 
onto my face and I freaked out and he didn't believe me. And it's like, cause I've never seen that growing up here. A locust or a, a locust. Lotus flower? I mean, a locust, a locust. Okay. Sorry. I said the wrong well, thing. A locust. Than a lotus. Yeah. Yeah. Not a lotus flower. <laughs> I mean, that would have been pleasant. Really, that would have been nice. Yeah. Like, this oh. was a locust and it flew like onto my face. I've never seen those. I, I grew up in, in LA mm-hmm. and he didn't believe me. And he had to pull over and I said, it's there, it's here. And it's just, a, it was just like, it's just, it's one of those things you can go, oh, well, it happens. But for me, it definitely felt connected to where I'm always interested in, the, in certain types of energies and the, and, the, and the underworld. And, you know, obviously it's what I do. I've had numerous things like that. So my sense is that she's very connected to those things. And works with those things. That's why she knew how to get rid of it. What do you think the message of the locust was? Um, you know, I just, at the time, there was a lot of change happening. And it could look at as a negative. Because when you look it up, it's all about the plague. Well, I don't know. This was mm. before COVID. It was mm. probably about a year before COVID. Mm. Um, and people kept saying, yeah, it was actually a year before COVID. And people kept saying, like, oh, it's it represents the plague, the plague. And I was like, well, what does that have to do with anything? And that's the only thing that came up. Interesting. And that's the only thing just now that you're asking me, I never even connected the dots because yeah. at the time I just was really searching other things that's happened to me. I could, I could connect the dots, you know, this was super random. I thought in, Get, in getting um, a little home in there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I get, I get the feeling she knew what she was doing and knew what she was working with. Yeah, I do too. Mm-hmm. Santander, awesome stories. Keep them coming. Super I know you awesome. have more. Um, okay, great. Riley, why don't you read your next letter? Okay. Hello, everyone. Love the podcast and recommend it to absolutely every person who enjoys podcasts. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I've had a big interest in aliens and UFOs, UAPs since I was a young child. When I was eight, I'm 39 now. My parents got my brother a book about alien abductions. He tossed it aside, but I read that book several times. The reason why is the story that I'm going to tell you. But I'd like to start by saying that I've always believed this was a dream, but it is so vivid and has stuck with me throughout the years. I get goosebumps when I think about it. I live with my mom in a two-story condo. Her bedroom was downstairs and mine was upstairs. I was six years old at the time. One night, I was in my room trying to go to sleep. I was having trouble sleeping, so I was playing with my toys. I remember that I wanted to go look outside my window. I've always been afraid of the dark, and this was the exact opposite of what I would do because it was dark outside. I walked to my window, which faced a brick wall. Beyond the wall was a field. I didn't see anything except the night sky, but when I looked down, that's when I saw it. I saw a person right below my window, except it wasn't a person at all. It was a humanoid being that had large, almond-shaped eyes. It was glowing in the moonlight, and it was staring right at me. I'm getting goosebumps right now, telling this story. I remember the feeling of absolute terror. My stomach dropped, and I wanted to run away, but I was stuck to the spot in my room. I couldn't move. To my horror, once the being and I locked eyes, it proceeded to climb up the wall and come towards me. Oh my god, climbing alien. The next thing I know, I am in my bed and it is mo- and it is morning. I immediately ran downstairs to my mom's room. She was up and getting ready for work. I never said a word to her about the dream, but I absolutely refused to sleep near that window as well as in her room by her window. That was where it was standing. Uh, over the years, I've thought about it here and there. It very well could have been a dream. It was likely it was a dream. <laughs> it sounds like she's convincing herself it was a dream. <laughs> I, it I was cannot. A dream. It's definitely a dream. I'm for sure, a hundred percent. This was definitely a dream. <laughs> I cannot shake the fear that I felt that night. For years, oh god, damn it! I Afterward. just jumped in the document. So you're far. okay to scroll up a little bit. I see okay. where you are. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry, Katie. I'll probably edit this out, but maybe I won't. For years afterwards, I was terrified to be sleeping next to a window. I went to London when I was 19, and I remember I stayed on a farm where the windows had to stay open or else it was unbearably hot. I started crying and shaking from having to have that window open, but no one, including myself, could figure out why it caused such a reaction to me. Wow. Oh, damn. That's like, that's like mm. X-Files episode. Some, like, drama. <laughs> 
Uh Uh-huh. I'll leave you to decide what you think may have happened. If you do decide to read this story, we did, I'd love to know what you think happened. Thanks for the laughs and the podcast, and also wanted Michael to know I am also terrified of the communion book cover as well. Thank you, and go get regressed, Katie. No, Katie, (laughs) you get regressed because you (laughs) were abducted by an alien. Yeah. I don't know, Katie, that's creepy. Yeah, that that feels pretty pretty real. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, my sense is that you know, that's a that's not like so out of the box. You know what I mean? It's like she's a kid, and kids tend to kind of you know, obviously see things right, and kind of you know, not sure what they're seeing. But my experience is that kids are just way more open to those things, which is why it happens a lot to kids and Mm -hmm. she's not like saying anything too crazy right it's pretty right so it's just a spider-man alien crawling up (laughs) climbing up a wall wall but she could have perceived it as climbing but maybe it was floating yep yep and that's my sense as your kid brain goes it's climbing up the wall what else could it be doing right Yeah. yeah I yeah. mean, the, uh, the, the, the window phobia later in life and the, the, the reaction right. on the trip, I think, is an interesting observation. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then the, like, suddenly it's morning, could be missing time. Look, I we have to acknowledge that she says about six times this was probably a dream, so I get right. it. Right. But I don't know. It, the terror certainly feels real. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, it's, look, probably a dream, but maybe. It was an alien coming. I'm coming saying no earth. dream. I'm saying no dream. Just <laughs> saying definite alien. Because your <laughs> dreams, you you have dreams and you remember them, right? And you're like, oh, they freak me out. But you don't be an adult and then suddenly have a fear of windows. Yeah, no, it's wild, wild stuff. Right. Very yeah. Wild. Uh, Michael just wants to believe it's a dream so he could believe his experiences are dreams. No, I know mine wasn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Adela, why don't you read uh, that little letter we got for you? Okay, sure. Hey, Michael, Bryce, Riley, and Adela and Mystic Dylan. After you reposted my story on the BCC Instagram, I thought I'd write to tell you what happened. So I'll interject real quick here. Sorry. Uh, A couple couple weeks back, um, someone had tagged us in an Instagram post that they had successfully summoned a UFO. And uh, didn't get a picture of it, but took a picture of the area over which they had had managed to do this. So um, I remember anyway, this. Take yeah. It away. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Got it. I live in Hong Kong, right on the ocean. And I often go down to the rocky shoreline of the little bay in front of my studio to watch the full moon rise over the water. While I was sitting there on the rocks last night, I couldn't help thinking about you recently playing the clip of Demi Lovato talking to Kesha about mm-hmm trying to summon ufos with dr stephen greer so i decided to give it a try i quietly said to myself if there's anything or anyone out there that wants to make itself known to me i am here and want to see you and then didn't really think much of it after that maybe 20 or 30 minutes later i saw an extremely bright light flying across the sky at an amazing speed that looked just like a shooting star, which was actually what I thought it was at first. All of a sudden, though, it stopped on a dime and stayed floating in the sky for maybe 10 seconds or so. Then, like before, it shot off into the clouds over the horizon. I was completely alone and couldn't help but feel like it was just for me coupled with it passing very close by the rising full moon it was really amazing and special experience that i have all of you to thank for whoa thanks for making such a fun and amazing podcast it's truly one of my favorites and i can't wait for the jet ski special peter whoa right cool on. yeah what do you think and about thanks that? to demi lovato and uh, kesha the- yeah, I I have a quick question before we th- think mm-hmm. about that. What do you guys think about the Demi Lovato thing? You know what? Guiltfully, I have not watched it yet. I got to watch that show. Okay. It's on Paramount or Peacock. I can't remember. Yeah, they keep I, prom- 
Paramount. I think it's Paramount because they keep advertising it. And I know that, you know, this is something she's been doing for a hot minute. And then obviously, like, was like, hey, we could probably make this into a show. Uh Um, I don't know. I mean, I I don't know. I think, um, look, this to me falls under. I I, I really don't know enough about the Demi Lovato thing other than to say that she has gotten results. And and according to her, and this is a perfect example of like Peter setting Mm -hmm. an attention and manifesting something and like getting a result, right? Whatever the mm-hmm. whatever this was, whether this was literally responding to his like, hey, come out and see me, it happened. He sent an intention, he got a result. This is kind of like a little magic ritual at play here. Cannot explain it, don't know what it means, but it's a cool thing. And I think this is a thing where like whatever it means to Peter is what it mean <laughs> what it means. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, the one thing I know from my experience of talking to those beings, they have said two things. One is we talk to whoever wants to talk to us or we'll show up to people who are interested. But they have also said many people are scared of us, so we can't go f- the full throttle for when it's in this in this way where right. someone's like, hey, I want to talk to you. You know, can you can you show up for me? Um, then they do say like, if we really did show up, you might freak out. Um, but they, but they also, um, they also have said like people who are kind of more tuned into this type of thing, more intuitive, more, you know, it's not just about the open mind, but if you also kind of are more willing to be telepathically communicating things like this, then they, um, try to do that. So I do believe that because I've heard that, like, we are interested if you're interested, but they also are interested in people who are taking it seriously, who aren't like just playing around. And they also kind of know most people get a little scared off. So, I mean, I do feel like that stuff could happen if you're, if you're open to it. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, it's just a telepathic communication. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all it is. Yeah. I mean, uh, all right. Peter, uh, Peter summoned uh, the Zola UFO. Case closed. Violet. <laughs> yeah i mean there as well once again yeah. um yeah see I, animals though i like that this is a peaceful moment for peter and really i nice, would recommend yeah. pete can yeah pete? go up, continue <laughs> to do this keep a lot yeah. try it like definitely see like start keeping track if you get results and then like keep a little journal i like that it was like 20 or 30 minutes later so it's not necessarily immediate but I mm-hmm. would start like making a routine. You're already sounds like you already do this on the full moon. Just like maybe every full moon, go down and um, do try this every time, and just take a note and keep a log if you get results or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Totally. Yeah. And also for anyone listening interested in summoning UFOs, check out our Patreon, uh, the other side, right. where there's a guided meditation on making contact with extraterrestrials. Yeah. Right. Check that yeah, out. Composed you know. by uh the man himself, Riley Bray. Yeah, that yeah. was a fun one. Yeah. All right. I definitely believe that. Mm-hmm. Cool stuff, Peter. And I also love that we're getting letters from Hong Kong and Argentina. Yeah, yeah. so cool. All around love the that. world. Okay, here we go. Uh they say I would like to preface with saying my house is directly under several airplane flight paths from KCI and the downtown airport. I was a little further south of Johnson County uh, Municipal Airport. So I'm well acquainted with what those lights look like. Also, I will not begin to assume what the origins of the lights from these two experiences were. I will leave that to you. But they were both odd regardless. This first happened uh, mid-September 2021, so just recently. Early morning on the way to work. I was facing west, driving toward the light that would take me to the on-ramp of I-35 South. I mean, guys, I know where all these things are. When I noticed a (laughs) single, very bright light in the sky right over the tree line, moving slowly from north to south at a steady altitude, meaning it wasn't descending. As I approached the traffic light, I looked away from the light in the sky for two seconds. And when I looked back, it was gone. At the speed this light had been traveling, there is no way it would have dipped below the tree line out of view. I really have no clue where the light would have been hidden. It just seemed to vanish. Hmm. The second occurrence. Yeah. 
was last Friday night, October 15th. I was at Burnt Ends BBQ in Overland Park, Kansas. They wrote OPK, but I know exactly what they're talking about. Oh, and wow. looked up. <laughs> We're not uh, in the know. Local know. Sorry, this is like yeah. on memory Local lane. lingo. Okay, cool. And looked up, I believe, towards the south and saw a similar single very bright light in the sky. As before, it was not moving fast, but after viewing it for about 10 seconds, the light went out. However, I could see a faint dark dot still moving across the sky at the same speed. It never zoomed off, but continued to move at a steady pace. My other strange UFO experience happened while I was very young growing up in East Texas. I was standing in my front yard, and I looked up to see a silver dot zigzag across the sky before quickly taking off. Who knows what any of those things were, but regardless, they were odd, and I hope worth sharing. Thank you for making such an enjoyable podcast that entertains and sometimes gives me nightmares. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> that's, that's, that's our goal. <laughs> We make you laugh. We yep. make you sweat the bed. Yeah. <laughs> when you're driving home from work, you're feeling really good. And when you're going to bed at night, you're like, why did I listen you're to freaking that? Freaking out. Yeah. <laughs> um, UFOs. You guys yeah, saw, some like UFOs? saw some UFOs. I yeah, say, yeah. Pretty much that. For sure. Take mm-hmm. a page yeah. out of Peter's book. Go out there on your coffee, you know, in the morning or whatever you're doing in the evening. Have a little moment. See if you can summon them. See what happens. Or you could just be laying in your bed and talk to them. That works too, guys. It's true. No, yeah, but I, nobody wants to do that. Travel the outer space I mean, through inner space. You can't see the UFO. But they could. But bed. they. But we're talking beyond UFO. We're talking the actual being coming oh into your I space. I don't know if Millie's ready for that. Okay. okay. Well, no. No. We're not going to do that. Avoiding okay. nightmares we'll, and we'll snuggle with the moon. <laughs> okay. Start with um, the moon. Yeah. Start with the moon. Start start with looking in the sky and then in take the it sky. Moon, really. Um also thank you for all of those Kansas City memories that I just, just went through my head. Aww. Um okay, Riley, why don't you read us our final letter for this episode? Um I will read And don't that. get abducted if, if you can. Yeah. All right. Hey BCC. I live in the Middle Tennessee area. He wrote TN, but I knew that that meant Tennessee. <laughs> now it's competition. <laughs> I know it's stuff I about you. places. I know what this abbreviation go, is. is. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to go hunting a lot with my dad. We would head out early in the morning, around 4 to 5 a.m., well before the sun came up, so we could get to our hunting spot before the deer woke up for breakfast. This particular morning, I remember, it was a little foggy, misty, and... Old. I remember we were driving down the back road, and on both sides were woods. I think I was dozing off because it was so early, but when I looked up at the road on the right side of the shoulder, coming out of the woods was a small dog-like looking animal. It looked mangy, had dark black skin, patches of black hair, very skinny and bony, long snout, and I could see its teeth and pointy ears. It was small like a dog, but with long skinny legs. It looked like it could have come up to a human's knees. It was rather smallish in stature, but as soon as we were coming up to it, and as soon as I saw it for a split second on the side of the woods in the headlights, it was gone back in the woods. I know my animals really well. I can see very well, don't need glasses. I'm very knowledgeable when it comes to all types of animals, but I don't think this was a dog. I don't remember making a noise or saying anything, but Dad looked at me and asked, what? I told him what I'd seen, and he he believed me. To this day, when I go driving down that road to that spot where I saw the creature, I slow down a bit and look into the woods, but I haven't seen anything like that or since, or even close to what resembles it. What do y'all think? Abby. So I didn't want to spoil this letter with the, with the headline or with the subject line, but this was, she wrote, I think I saw a chupacabra. (laughs) Oh, I remember saying that in the inbox and I was like, intriguing. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. It's tough. I mean, look. I trust your Tennessee senses, Abby. Um, could yeah, these be city a, boys aren't going to trust your yeah, ability. You to know, it could have been like a that. mangy raccoon, maybe. <laughs> wait, she, no, she said it was like human. <laughs> like, wait, 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 what size are we talking here? Well, up to the she knees. Said, up to the up knees. To the that's, knees. A, that's a big ass raccoon, man. Dude, I just saw some in my neighborhood. They were big. I yeah, mean, like, I think in those areas, it's different than like up here to the in knees. California. I, I, I think raccoon, we're insulting Abby like, if we say eh, that, maybe that, that we are. Okay. It wasn't okay. a raccoon. 
But it could be like, mange, could it be mange. like a starving dog? Yeah. It could be a dog with mange or a raccoon with mange. Yeah. Right. Or like, or like even a bear. A bear with mange could be like a really skinny and weird looking. Oh, that's You know true. what I mean? Oh, like a There's sick bear. In Tennessee, aren't yeah. There? A sick bear could yeah. look chupacabra-ish. Yeah. Right. I don't know, but now I'm worried about this animal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> More fun when I'm it's worried about this cover. animal yeah. and the you know zombie person. I'm worried yes. about them both. Oh boy, bring it really bring it home. Maybe that maybe that's the zombie person's dog. <laughs> <laughs> the zombie person's looking for their dog. I don't know. Weird. Sounds super spooky. Fits the bill for like what you hear of like the West Texas chupacabra, kind of like yeah. more dog like and bony. Mm. Um, I just don't know. I don't know. You saw something yeah. you can identify. Yeah, I, I mean, agree. Which qualifies as a cryptid sighting one way or another. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Agree. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Definitely one of those things that I'm sure is creepy, but we're not sure. Just not sure. Probably. Yeah. Can be. Can Question can mark be. over that a one. Tall, a tall, mangy raccoon is my guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see that either, by the way, coming yeah. from not the country. You know but. that raccoon is pissed, too. I, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm going to eat you. I opened no. my door two nights ago, and there was a raccoon just right at right where what? my What? Are they mean? Down. Or can uh, they the, be mean? In this neighborhood, they're pretty chill. They're just oh, okay. chill, but they can also carry rabies. So, like, no, don't, I don't get like any big them. ideas. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, I mean, yeah. we're not friends. I was like, holy shit. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I saw one just pop out of a trash can one time, and it was pretty cute. They're <laughs> so it. cute. I do like them secretly. They're so fat and cute. Little raccoons. I still cute. think they can hurt you. Sure. Oh, they de- no, yeah, don't don't touch the raccoons. Yeah. Okay. Don't, don't they feed can them like drive cars and like break into your house and stuff. <laughs> they have opposable <laughs> thumbs, I believe. Yeah. Squirrels can do that in LA because they're so friendly and used to people that I used to see squirrels take I saw a squirrel take someone's wallet out of their purse and run up the tree. <laughs> Little bastard. Yeah. So I hear they just get too comfortable. Now I'm I'm Googling if raccoons have opposable thumbs because I don't want to sound like a fucking idiot. What? <laughs> Uh, the raccoon's paws lack an opposable thumb. Okay, good. But they have they have little tiny hands. They have those little fingers, those little raccoon hands. Yeah, they ha- and they have uh, sharp, non-retractable claws. So stay right. away. Yeah. Um, Adela, thank you yes. so much for joining us. Um, thank where you. can people find you? So yes, people can find me everywhere on social media. I'm Adela Levine. I have a YouTube channel. I have an Instagram. I now have a Patreon um, that I, yeah, I I decided that I wanted to do more information. I've been posting paranormal stories, which seem to obviously be very popular. I've experienced this month because, you know, it's the month that people want to hear that. And I'll do like some f- little bit of readings on there and some lives. And so if you join, it's $5 and um, you also get a 35% a code for a discount off oh, my readings. Nice. Um, so it's pretty, I like it because it's like one place I can put content that people are really, I call, I call them like spiritual seekers because those people are really, really into this. And if you really want more, that's a better place. But I also have all the free stuff on YouTube, Instagram. I have, um, if people are interested this Friday night, I'm doing an online seance. There's a few tickets left. You can go to my um, website, adelevine.com. I think that'll have passed since the time this came out. Oh gosh, you're right. Never but mind, we missed it. But you can come in spirit. Yeah. But your yeah, spirit well, can be there. Actually, next time. Yeah, show <laughs> up like travel. You met, yeah, you retroactively. Sh- yeah, spirit I'm calling. I'm calling out the Check spirits of your family, time. right? Of your family and friends, and maybe they'll show up at my seance online. Love it. All there right, you go. Um, <laughs> I hope at least one ghost listens to this show. <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> it's uh, patreon.com slash Adela Levine, I'm assuming. Right. Yes. Great. Thank Great. you. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, also, Mystic Dylan, who we lost. Uh, if you're in Southern California, go check out the Old World Emporium in Santa Clarita. Mm-hmm. That's his shop full of mystic goodies. And he has a book out right now called The Witches, The Witch's Guide to Manifestation. You can get that wherever you get books. So uh, check that one out as well. Uh, as for us... Follow us at Bigfoot Collectors Club on Instagram at Bigfoot Pod on Twitter, uh, patreon.com slash Bigfoot Collectors Club, where we will continue 
to be doing uh, the Patreon, the BCC, the other side. Now until January for the rest of you, uh, no regular episodes until early 2022. We had to take a break, but there's like I said before, there will still be stuff dropping every Wednesday in the mm-hmm. feed. If you're not a Patreon subscriber, you're going to hear some Patreon unlocks that may that'll be brand new to you. Um, we got a couple other surprises coming your way, so stay tuned, stay subscribed. Uh, we're not really, I mean, we're taking a break, but we're not really taking a break. So yeah. it'll be fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's almost a vacation, but it's we're going to keep it alive for you it's guys. It's almost, too good to walk uh, away. It's from, almost you know? a vacation. <laughs> but hey, but, if I you mean, miss us, come over to patreon.com slash Bigfoot Collectors Club. Join us for the other side. See how you like it. Come for a month. Come for a month or yeah, two. Just try it yeah. out. Maybe try some of these easy. drops uh, will entice you over to the other yes. side. Indeed. Mm. All right. Speaking of the patron, we're going to say goodbye to Adela. And then Riley and I are going to do some Patreon shout outs and thank all of our newest and returning members. So Adela, thank you again. Uh, we'll go check all your stuff out. The rest of you guys. Ugh, I'm so sad to say uh, we won't speak to you in this fashion until we're rescued. Probably until we're off to rescue Bryce in the jet ski dimension. That's whenever, right. We're coming back with him. Hell or high water. Yeah. All right, everybody. We'll leave you there on that cliffhanger. Until then, good night. And go get regressed. Bigfoot Collectors Club is produced by Riley Bray. Our theme song is Come Alone by Sun Eaters, courtesy of Lotus Pool Records. If you like the show, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It really helps get the podcast to more listeners. To support the show, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash Bigfoot Collectors Club and unlock multiple reward episodes every month. Okay, everybody, we have some Patreon shout outs. These are all of our friends who have recently joined or rejoined BCC, the other side. Here we go go krista vick thank you gray Shaffron. oh it says oh it says gray oh gray i think it's a great yeah thank thank you gray cool name yeah shaylin chiquito thank you elise l thank you hovel dillian thank you joshua board thank you lee m thanks lee matthew cagle thank you waffles oh thanks waffles <laughs> just waffles in general <laughs> just All, waffles yeah just the, thanks the, waffles Plato's Waffles joined the <laughs> Patreon. Uh, Damien Valencia. Thank you. Andrew Madzu- uh, Manzuk. Thank you. Andrew Manzuk. Thank you. Uh, yes. Carson Raycraft. Thank you. Why don't you read some names now and I'll say thank you? Because <laughs> that job is harder. Morgan <laughs> Copeland. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Laura Clark. Thank you. Dylan Weaver. Thanks, Dylan. Michael Martin. Thank you, Michael. Crystal. Crystal, thanks. Sharon P. Thank you. Tammy Germani. Thank you, Tammy. Mark Metzel. Metzel. Yeah, yeah. Metzel or Metzel. Thank you. Yeah. Furious Jeff. Hey, welcome back, Jeff. Matt. Oh, man. A chisel. A chisel. All right. Do you want Sorry, me to take man. over again? <laughs> Can you? It's, it is so hard. It's really, it makes me sweat. Oddly, I had bracket. a weird time like saying thank you without hitting it too hard. So <laughs> let's go back to our regular okay. schedule. Let's do our thing. Yeah. I'm like, thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank <here."> you. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Uh, Heather Keneally. <laughs> thank you. Heather Newman. Cumin. Cumin. Thank you. Shit. <laughs> We're doing terrible at this. Heather Cunin. <laughs> thank you, Heather. Derek Hayes oh, of Monsters thanks, Derek. Among Us. Thank you, yeah. Derek. Uh, Jay Freeman. Thank you. Danny Vaughn. Thank you. Brett Rudy. Thanks, Brett. Riley Ray. What? Wait a minute. That's almost my name. Thank you, we Riley. We should meet. We should. That's interesting. Thanks, mm. Riley. Bobo D. Bear. Ah, uh, Bobo. Thank Is you. Is this a circus bear listening? I to hope show? so. We can. I just want a, a bear just sitting at a laptop listening on the laptop. Paying, uh, using his hard earned dollars to support the show. We appreciate it. We appreciate you. Micah Turner. Thank you. Kelsey. Thanks, Kelsey. Eric C. Thank you. Jessica Apollonio. Thank you. 
Andrew. Thanks, Andrew. Paul Kudlik the third. Ah, thank you. Lacey Gurley. Thank you. Uh, Lacey Gurley, excuse me. The stapler. Lacey. The stapler. Okay, <laughs> the we got stapler. waffles and we have staplers now. <laughs> no, it's just one. It's the stapler. Yeah, you're right. That's true. Th- thank you, the stapler. Thank you, the staplers. Uh, <laughs> shit. Thank you, the <laughs> stapler. <laughs> I think that Ashley Edible's Powers kicking in right now. I uh, better read this up. <laughs> yeah, Ashley hang on Powers. to the end here. This last couple minutes is a race against time. Thank you. <laughs> Chris Brewer. <laughs> Thank you. Adam Smith. Thank you. Mary. Thank you. Melkor, 19285. <laughs> is, that, is that one of Elon's uh, yeah, offspring? Thank probably. you. Thank you, Melkor. Uh, Tina Fleets. Thank you, Tina. Or for the Tez, I don't know. Thank you either way. Anthony Golden. Thank you. And finally, last but definitely not least, JR. Nice. Thank you, JR. Guys, we honestly cannot thank you enough. Truly. Um, if you're listening to this, uh, if you stayed this long and listen, uh, that means you're probably one of our supporters. And uh, mm-hmm. your support means everything to us. You guys keep this show going so so thank true you. we can't we can't express it enough you guys really do like it's uh means a lot it keeps us going you guys are the best and we will keep the patreon going strong while the main feed is taking a short yeah. break and we're gonna do some fun stuff we'll be doing some fun stuff between now and january so stick oh, yeah. with us join us if you haven't already uh all right now we got to go f- rescue bryce it's time neonis has called he's yes. throw down the gauntlet let's go get bryce let's gas up those jet skis and do this Let's go, brother. <laughs> All right. Brother. Let's go, brother. <laughs> Hell yeah. Bye, guys. We love you. Bye.